Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here. Have you ever written an application in which you needed to be able to save a form? Sure you have. That's like every application that ever existed. Well, have you ever had to write an app that had to save multiple forms at once? It's normally called save all. Yeah, you probably needed that too. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use composite commands to implement a save all functionality in your application. This video is sponsored by Infragistics, fast and beautiful UI controls and time-saving tools for developers and UX pros. They really do provide the fastest path to amazing experiences. If you're looking for the fastest grids and charts to the market, or just looking for some new modern components to spruce up your application, look no further. Give Infragistics a try. Open up your favorite web browser, navigate to bit.ly slash prism infragistics, and tell them that Prism sent you. The more people that use this link, the more videos that I get to record. So let's give Infragistics a big thank you, visit their site, and check out their products. To show how easy it is to use composite commands, I'm using a WPF application. However, it doesn't matter if you're using WPF, Xamarin Forms, UWP. Implementing composite commands is the exact same on all three platforms. Nothing changes. In this particular case, it just happens to be a WPF app. Now this particular WPF application has three tabs, tab A, tab B, and tab C. And as you can see, each tab has a can execute checkbox, which allows us to control the state of the save button and a button called save, which you can click and save each of these tabs individually. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could have one global button called save all that when I click, all three tabs are saved at the same time. Well, that's exactly what composite commands are meant for. So let's go ahead and start implementing them. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at kind of how this application is set up. So it's a WPF application with a main page. Now this main page has a button and a tab control, which acts as a region. In this region, we are injecting tabs from a different assembly or module. So if we look at module A, we'll see that we have a tab view and we're creating multiple instances of this tab view. And it's very simple. It has a text block, a text box, and it has a button, all right? And another text block on here. So the text block is title, can update. We have an update command and update text. If you've seen the video for using a uh, delegate command, it's very similar to that. And then of course, if you look in our view model for that tab, you'll see we have properties for title, can update, update text. We have our update command, which is just a delegate command. And when you hit update, we set the text to updated and the current time. Perfect. And then in the module class, we are just creating three instances of those and adding them to the region. So that's how all the tabs are being populated inside of the region on the main window. Now, what we want to do is we want to click this save all button that's in the shell in the main window and save all of the tabs that exist in the module A assembly. So to do this, the first thing we want to do is we got to have a common core assembly that's shared among all the, the modules and projects in our solution. So I have a uh, core project here that I'm going to be using for that. So I'm going to start by adding a new class. I'm going to call it application commands. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new interface called I application commands. And in this interface, I'm going to create a property called composite command save all command. And we'll just add a getter to that. Now what we want to do is have this application commands class implement our I application commands. Of course, we're not going to do it this way. I'm going to create a simple property. And this is going to be a composite command. And it needs to be called save all command. 
I'm actually going to convert this to have a backing field, uh, but I'm going to remove the setter. And I'm just going to set this backing property equal to a new instance of a composite command. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do this, but this is pretty easy. See, even Visual Studio is telling me I can do something different with this. So let's see what it says I can do. Uh, use auto property. Sure, we can do that. Why not? Okay, so now that we have our I application commands, right? We have our save all command here. We need to go into our application XAML CS and we need to register this application command class as a singleton with our container. So I'm going to say uh, container registry, register singleton, I application commands, and we'll need to add our using statement. Yep, with application commands. Now that we have our class registered against the interface, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to this, this button here. And I want to say, whenever I click this button, I want to invoke this save all command, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the view model of our main window. I'm going to add a property of I application commands. And how about we call this application commands. And it looks like I'll need to rename that because my snippet did something very strange. And we'll call this application commands. That was really weird what my snippet just did. Anyways, the next thing we need to do is assign this property. So I'm going to just copy that into our CTOR. Basically, I'm asking the container for an instance of this. And then I'm going to set our property to that instance. Okay, now that we have our application commands in our view model, let's go back to our main window. I'm going to bind the command of this button to application commands.save all command. Let's make sure we fix our typo. Okay, perfect. So now whenever I click this button, I'm going to invoke the save all command that belongs to our application commands class. All right, so I'm good here. Let's close this. The next thing we need to do is we need to go into the view model of our tabs. And in here, we're going to ask for I application commands. Let's go ahead and add our using application commands. And then I'm going to say application commands dot save all command dot register command. And Take a guess of what command I'm going to register. That's right, the update command. So the update command, remember, this is the instance command that allows each tab to save itself individually. Well, now we have the save all command, this global command that we're gonna use the update command to invoke. So we're gonna say, whenever I click this save all command, however many commands that are registered for save all, we're going to invoke those. So let's go ahead and run our application now. Okay, now that the application is running, we can still save these individually, right? But now look at what happens when we click our save all. Bam, okay, how many seconds? So 146.46, 146.46, 146.46. So these all saved at the same time. Now what happened here is when we create three instances of this tab, each instance registers itself, registers its update command with our save all command. So that means whenever we click this save all command, all three instances of, the, of that update command is going to be invoked too. One thing to keep in mind though, commands have an execute and a can execute. So if you're using composite commands, if just one of those registered commands returns false for can execute, then none of the commands will be invoked. See that? So if I enable that, I can save again. If I disable that, it disables the save all. And it doesn't matter which one it is. If just one out of all the registered commands returns false for can execute, 
the composite command can execute will turn false as well. Now there is a way to get around this, but that's gonna be saved for a, a later video. That's it. That's how easy it is to use composite commands to invoke many commands throughout your application all at once. If you like this video and wanna see more, be sure you hit that subscribe button so you're notified when I publish a new video. Thanks for watching.